Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and we did it. We finally made a Leap Slam build, accidentally. So the plan for this build was to play some sick Earthquake, try out some uh, big slamage with a Brain Rattler, which is a fairly underutilized unique, and I hadn't really thought too much about it personally in a while, but then um, uh, we did a bit of thinking, and yeah, Brain Rattler for Earthquake, maybe it can work with the Slayer Ascendancy, giving us a lot of crit, giving us a lot of area, kind of takes away the shortcomings of the mace. And so I wanted to make a full Lightning Earthquake with Impulsor for or some extra explosioning, and uh, it just kind of evolved into Leap Slam for Clear because it seemed like it was doing good enough. So in this setup for Earthquake as a Slayer with Brain Rattler, I am using both Earthquake and Leap Slam on two separate Six Links, and the Leap Slam by itself can actually clear uh, just about everything I've come across so far. This currently is like a Delve 370 or something. The first time I'm trying Delves on this character, he's like high level 80s, 89 or something. And yeah, we can just jump around one-tapping everything if we really want, or if you need to, stand still, drop a few screen-wide earthquakes without doing too much area scaling, yet they're still screen-wide, and one-shot everything on the screen anyway. But uh, so far, so good with the Leap Slam playstyle. Basically, you can just jump around and one-shot everything. With Impulsor Incorporated as well, it does seem that our one-shot ability just uh, goes up quite a little bit, but not even sure it's all that necessary. It's just the sheer area of the Leap Slam uh, paired with the fact that you are a Slayer. It's got a lot of area scaling. Uh, means that you can probably just one-shot everything uh, under just about most circumstances with a Leap Slam. And in this case, I'm even using a Blood Magic on my Leap Slam, so it's not a pure six link either. And uh, Otherwise, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this. It's just silly. And it feels really nice to play. It is going to be kind of a uh, potentially squishy build in the end because I am playing with an Abyssus. Gonna have over 6k life with some defenses though. As you can see, I got three perma endurance charges. And uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, how it really takes on the pure endgame, which will, for me, uh, on this character, be five way legions. Because uh, it's going to steamroll everything else. It does take on current legions quite nicely. One taps everything. Uh, bosses and um, actual maps and all that are pretty damn smooth too. And uh, you can take some hits with this type of a setup where you have perma endurance charges, a little bit of armor scaling and stuff like that. Uh, means that you're not completely squishy, but I do think a five-way legion is going to put us to some real test. Who knows though, maybe we'll still one-shot everything, because so far, so good against legions. I am still taking on uh, lots of Maraketh situations without uh, dying because, well, I kill them before they kill me. That's just the nature of the Slayer area. Uh, the Impulsor, the Earthquake, the Leap Slam, and it seems to be working rather well. Uh, the playstyle is pretty ridiculous with Earthquake. It's kind of like a more mobile, or just as mobile I should say, but bigger damage Cyclone. Uh, because once you pop your Vile Earthquake, you can see, especially against things like Betrayal, you just pop it and you're basically running away killing things. And uh, it feels kind of like cheating every time you pop Vile Earthquake, and you can have it up pretty often. But it's not really what's carrying the build, it's just a huge added bonus whenever you want to press it. Uh, otherwise, the Leap Slam and the Earthquake by itself really does feel quite nice uh, on their own to do all the clearing you really need. And I am currently using the reduced uh, Earthquake Duration Enchant to proc the second wave quicker, but I only put that thing on at like level 82 or something, and I really don't think it's at all necessary this time around. It seems like Leap Slam Clear just really uh, nullifies the strict need for your Earthquake uh, secondary shockwave to go off almost immediately. Traditionally, that's what you try to do with Earthquake, get that second shockwave cooldown, uh, or duration down to almost zero, so every time you slap your Earthquake down, you get the big effect as well. This time around, that just didn't really seem strictly necessary, because Leap Slam's doing most of the clear, uh, so you just save your Earthquake for the bigger single target and uh, bosses, and that's um, when it doesn't particularly matter that your Shockwave's coming in just a little bit later. But I am still using it, and um, I don't know, I guess maybe it's the still optimal situation. 
Um, if you're gonna be pure single targeting, it will generate you a little bit more DPS. But for a lot of boss fights, as you can see like this one, I am still trying to just um, leap slam shit because my leap slam crits awfully hard. And that is also largely because I've paired it with the shockwave support, which I'll go over and show you in just a second. But it's because of the shockwave support, I think, that um, our Leap Slam doesn't suck anymore and can be used as a clear and thus letting us live out the dream of pure Leap Slam clearing for maps. Um, well, single target, it's never gonna feel that good, I don't think. You're always gonna want some sort of uh, secondary effect because it's just not a single target skill, is it? It doesn't have the scaling to do more damage than anything else. Just about any other skill in this place will um, do more single target than Leap Slam, but it certainly does um, generate some fun map clear. And then so far, the only real single target I've tested is against a Shaper, just for a little bit of fun. And uh, Vile Earthquake, once again, feels like cheating. So I want to go over how I've built the character so far, what the gear looks like, and um, what you can expect when you're making your own. So the character here is currently level 90 Slayer called Five Head Earthquake, supposed to be kind of a big brained uh, or rather brain rattler um, based uh, earthquake build. And I do have a bit of different lighting in my room now as well, specifically for or to go with the big purple microtransaction. The only real reason I even wanted to touch earthquake is because the micro came out, thought it looked kind of cool. And it's been a while since I've done an earthquake build, which are usually really quite nice. Uh, especially thanks to Vile Earthquake these days. So we are building around Brain Rattler. I don't think it's really necessary in the build after I've come to play with it and start scaling it. It, um, I don't think really does too much more than what you do with a good staff, a good mace. Um, similar effect you can get with the Impulsor and the Explosions would still be with a Star Forge as well. I think you can build this type of um, character, Leap Slamming, and um, doing clear with the Leap Slam, but attack with a single target. Uh, many different ways. I don't think Brain Rattler is really something you have to do here at all. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure it does anything better than any other build, except for um, allow us to not have to use Fizz to Lightning for Impulsor procs in other builds. Uh, in any case, that's what the mace looks like. It's got a decent amount of Fizz. It converts half your damage into Lightning, gives you a bit of penetration. Um, and because of that, we do try and convert a little bit of our damage as well. So another 23% there. In total, that means I got 73% of my Fizz to Lightning. Uh, as well as that, though, I am scaling a bit of additional Lightning damage. So an amulet like this has extra um, Lightning on it. A Watcher's Eye I'm using over here has extra Lightning as well. So in total, I've got something like um, 110 of my physical as lightning uh, with some fizz actually left over as well and that doesn't really matter because uh, it still hits fairly hard and um, we are immune to reflect thanks to headsman anyway so the leftover fizz doesn't really matter and converting it won't give you that much more damage unless you're scaling a lot of elemental uh, which we're not doing particularly much of at the moment uh, if I start using the weapon elemental damage gem in my supports, which I'm not currently, then um, converting the last bit of your physical will matter. And uh, if you're doing a lot of penetration, uh, then you start to want um, full conversion. I don't have that much penetration, so it's not that important. It's not going to be really any better than physical. It may even be slightly worse. So that's the current setup with the Brain Rattler. It's the only real um, item that's of particular interest here. I then did put on the Impulsor so I can do the explosions with the uh, lightning shocks, but not sure that's strictly necessary. And like I said, you can get a similar effect wearing this and then a Star Forge and still building crit. Uh, and then you can use other things with the Star Forge instead of uh, Earthquake. But I think Earthquake and the Leap Slam playstyle really do synergize quite nicely. Perhaps um, Static Strike could give you a similar effect if you don't want to use something like a Brain Rattler at all. So we are using Shockwave in both of these setups. And that's what this looks like over here. 207% of base damage. Um, and it's got a cooldown of something like 0.7. Uh, so it does deal quite a lot of damage and it is going to be hitting just about every time you're hitting with Earthquake or with Leap Slam. And that is a large part of the reason we can actually clear with Leap Slam because it's on my Leap Slam as well. And every single time you're jumping with your Leap Slam, you create a bigger shockwave effect and it's 
pretty much doubling up your damage. So instead of just Leap Slam hitting the one time, you're getting a much bigger effect as well and hitting even harder. So we have Leap Slam attached to Shockwave. Those are our two primary supports. You then have Pulverize for more area, a uh, bit more damage as well, uh, Fortify, Blood Magic, and faster attacks. So without Blood Magic, um, it does cost a bit of mana, 29. That's not really that much, but if you're just going between packs from pack to pack, you will eventually kind of run out of mana, and so it can be fairly annoying. Um, so that's why we have Blood Magic there, but ideally you can get away without it and put another big damage link in there. Chances are I won't be able to do that on this character. As far as our Earthquake is concerned, currently have Earthquake, which is a Vile Earthquake attached to less duration. When you do less duration, that means that your sh um, Shockwave effect, secondary Shockwave effect, comes in a bit quicker. So we always prioritize less duration on Earthquake builds. You then have Pulverize, Ruthless, melee physical and shockwave as well so pretty much once again doubling up our damage every single time we're slapping down a hit with the shockwave support uh, so it's a pretty damn strong support coming in throughout this patch uh, and i still am going to be fine tuning a bit i think i'll probably end up removing ruthless and putting on uh, increased area and then um, that means i'll clear a little bit better currently have more than enough damage to maintain that clear um, and then putting Conk Effect for single target and quite likely taking out Pulverize and putting in Ruthless. So the ine um, inevitable single target will be with Ruthless and Conk Effect and uh, no Pulverize. But currently just playing around like this and it's totally fine. Uh, and besides that, I have uh, done a little bit of meta crafting for a lot of my gear, which I'll go over now. Uh, so we have a Life Assassin Mark ring. This thing costs an Exalt and then I put on Multi Mod. Uh, and it doesn't really matter too much the multi-mod here. It's not super important, but the idea is I wanted to try and get mini uh, min endurance charges going on every single one of my jewelry so I could have three minimum endurance charges. They're a great way to combat wearing an abyssus, and uh, they're not going anywhere ever. You can't consume them with your immortal calls. You can't uh, lose them. So they're always going to be up, and that's um, quite a lot of reliable defense against taking extra damage on Abyssus. So another ring that's just got a little bit of Fizz Mana Leech. Uh, that's how we sustain our mana. Got some accuracy. Another min endurance charge. Got another amulet here, I believe. Cost one exalt before the multi-mod as well. Then multi-modded and put on min endurance, some area and some life. Um, and then I've got some gloves that uh, managed to roll with zeal essences that have uh, life, resist, attack speed, and then a little bit of conversion. Like I said, the conversion isn't super important, but I'm still going to try and go for the conversion personally because I can, but uh, I don't think it's at all necessary. Not even sure it's a damage upgrade in my current setup. I uh, then rolled this belt using prismatic, uh, pristine, metallic, sanctified. So I used one four socket resonator, got this one. It was fairly lucky. Uh, I do have a much worse one as well that I was wearing, um, and that's totally fine too. The lightning damage itself, not super important because we're not converting everything into lightning yet. Um, so ideally, you're just looking for life, resist, wed, and then a pair of boots that just fill out a little bit of int, a little bit of dex, some life. So pretty crappy boots, and if you get better boots um, across the board, you can uh, lower your gear requirements everywhere else. Uh, flasks and lines raw, diamond, and it's series. They all do quite a lot of damage for our build. And the passive tree itself is uh, has gone through quite a few revisions. And uh, at the moment, I'm trying to get a bit of life into the tree and all that. Because uh, I started out getting all of the area. I was getting all the attack speed and area down here. Um, this area over here. And uh, ultimately, it, it was too much. I had a lot of area and I just didn't need it. The scaling off of area with Slayer using impact and then pulverize supports. Uh, it's just so much goddamn area that it's um, once you're like sacrificing other stats, life, damage, defense, whatever, it doesn't really make any sense when you don't need any more area than what I currently have. So it just stopped making sense to scale that way. And once I wanted to try and get Abyssus into the build, I had to squeeze in more life. Uh, and a bit more defense. So we do have a little defensive node over here. We do have as many life nodes as we can, and I'm still gonna be getting a few more, trying to bust um, <clears throat> trying to bust 6K life, 
Um, but you don't actually even need abysses. I was up to level 82, I think, before I put on abysses. Still one-shotting everything, still destroying the screen. Uh, I had a very scuffed setup up until like tier 8 maps using like a mana flask and half my gear was still leveling gear. Just this sheer combo of um, some strong 6 linked leap slam, earthquake and um, well whatever items you can. A brain rattler, maybe an impulsor. It's just very strong at the moment uh, for clear even in the lower tiers. So to begin with I did grab impact. I then went into headsman, then bane of legends and then I was starting to go into crit. And uh, that's when I started to spec into Overwhelm as well. You won't really have much crit until much later on. So like level 60, level 70. That's when you start specking for crit. Prioritize your uh, life and area up until then. And if you want to know what my uh, lethal pride does, it's nothing too special. Just an extra 4% life, 30 crit, 20 melee, and 5% double damage. So I'd say it's a little bit better than a regular jewel, but uh, I might still try and make one slightly nicer because things like 20 melee damage um, aren't particularly worth the stat investment on a um, jewel and also 4% life, pretty weak too. Might try and get better, but currently that's the best I got and um, it's just okay. So I'd say that's all I need to really mention for the build to begin with. Um, and hopefully in the next video I show off some serious single target and uh, potentially my best five-way clearer thus far. It has potential for that if we're going to be destroying the Legion bosses very quickly and not dying from pack to pack, then I think it'll probably end up being the best um, five-way character I've had, though it's got a tough road ahead of it because uh, the Storm brand one before it was pretty damn dirty. So anyway guys, um, thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and see you next time.